Columbia County News. the story breaks wherever the news goes columbia county news will bring it to you with debbie corcelia and mark johnson with sports and now here's debbie welcome to columbia county news the place for the latest in local information i'm your host debbie corcelia to keep you in touch with your community keep it right here the Northwest Economic Alliance has given a preliminary approval to a $27,500 grant to Columbia Community Television and the Columbia Technology Center. The St. Helens nonprofit organization will use the funds to begin webcasting Channel 9 programming over the internet. Here's a look at the promotional video that the partners showed on the NOEA board. Formed in 1992, CCTV is a public educational and government access station which provides training in television production as well as programming of community events. The Columbia Technology Center is a nonprofit computer training center and internet service provider open in the spring of 1996. Both CCTV and the Technology Center have stable operations and rely strongly on volunteers and students in fulfilling their function within the community. These organizations propose a webcasting grant to provide access television to outlying areas in Northwest Oregon. Through the use of real audio software, television over the internet will reach the approximately 50% of the local area residents with home computer. These latest developments have made it practical for CCTV and the Columbia Center to become the first area in public access television to provide live and archived streaming video. Through webcasting, political and economic issues may be addressed throughout the county. Access television will become a tool for the 21st century. Will Channel 9 programs be available live on the net, but also there will be an archive of videos about the region that can be viewed by visitors. We hope this project will allow former residents to maintain ties to the region and attract new visitors and neighbors. CCTV's Country Western video show Go West turns two on September 27th, and hosts Mark Johnson and Becky McKesh are still going strong. And here's a look at that first show. That was Ricochet. We've got great videos on Go West. Almost too good for CCTV. No, Mark, nothing's too good for our loyal viewers. Country fans out here deserve the best, and that's why we're here. Darn tootin', man. And one of the best is 23-year-old James Bonamy. This state's on of Florida made his earliest influences included George Jones, George Strait, Merle Haggard, and Conway Twitty. He credits his wife, 
Life, Amy Jane is being inspiration for songs like I Don't Think I Will, off his debut album, it's What I Live to Do. I Don't Think I Will made it all the way to number two on the Billboard Top 40 before flipping to third this week. Here's the video. That was David Kirsch with Good Night, Sweetheart. A good voice on that guy. Yeah, Mark. But I think the best voice on the show belongs to our next artist. You must mean John Barry, and you may be right. John Barry has recorded a number of albums. His debut, self-titled, was released in 1993 and gave us an introduction with his singles A Mind of Her Own and Kiss Me in the Car. John hit the top of the charts with his smash Your Love Amazes Me, and from his new album, Faces, his latest single, Change My Mind, is rising to the top 40. Currently at 33, here's John Barry and Change My Mind. You and millions of fans are right, Becky. He does have a sweet voice. True, but I know someone who has a sweet voice, too. Really? You know a big Nashville star? Well, not so much a big star, but he's seen on TV a lot, and anyone who has been in the local karaoke scene uh, have heard this voice. Well, he's got to be good to get on this show. He is good. It's you. I knew that. Why do you think I said all that? Let's not get a big head now. Too late. Anyway, here's a ver our very own Mark Johnson with his first video, Should Have Been a Cowboy. That's a great song. Now, that's a voice. That young man is going somewhere. Yeah, he's going out of here. What? The show is over. That's it for the first Go West. No more videos? That's it. Well, okay, but don't worry. We'll be back in two weeks with more top name country videos, music news, the latest on new CDs, and more. And don't forget to watch Country Music Association Awards on October 2nd. Also, if you have a video or are in a local country band, call Go West at CCTV 397-5886 and we'll, fe we'll feature you on the show. Yes, we will. I guess it's time to ride off into the sunset. So until next time, from Malarkey Ranch, I'm Mark Johnson. And I'm Becky McCatch. Thanks for watching. Go West. To celebrate the birthday, there will be a repeat of the first show, September 27th at 3 o'clock p.m., to be followed by a live show from 3.30 to 6. There will be door prizes and surprises at the CCTV studio. Now, if you want to be in the live audience, call CCTV to reserve a spot, because space is limited. Students in St. Helens had the grand finale of their band camp, and let's take a look.
October 3rd at McKay High School in Salem. So, and, and everybody's invited. Take them home, they're hot and tired. <laughs> well, I can't wait to hear that band at the football games this fall. Well, and speaking of football, I know you've missed our sports guy, Chuck Purvis. Well, I went looking for that wayward soul, and I caught up with him as he was putting the finishing touches on the new mobile production unit. Okay, Debbie, you found me. And no, we haven't forgotten about football here at CCTV or any of the sports. In fact, the sports are going to kick off tonight with the Jamboree up at Scappoose. And you know what, Debbie? Scappoose is ranked number one in the state in the first coaches poll, and St. Helens is number 12. Now, the Scappoose team has back most of its starting line as well as some skill people, and their question mark is going to be how fast their new quarterback can mature. For St. Helens, they're a smaller team than in past years, and they have back Josh Goff, already a, a well-renowned back in the state, a real good quick back. So we expect a lot out of both these teams this year. We're told that St. Helens is going to open it up on offense this year and run a spread option. Is this uh, sort of like what Oregon State ran? Maybe. We'll have to wait and see. But we are really happy to be getting back into sports, and you caught me working on our new van here. And you know, folks, this is a real combination of uh, community support here. We've got equipment from, that was provided by the city of St. Helens, equipment provided by the city of Scappoose, a van donated by Midway Electric, and you're going to see us around at all the games this year. If you see the van, stop on in and say hi. We don't mind if a few people come and see what we're doing. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you Friday night at the Jamboree. Uh, back to you, Debbie and uh, you'll be getting sports reports from now on. Well, the fall season starts September 4th with the Jamboree, and I hope you'll join me at the Scapoose Field to see if Scapoose is really number one. And is St. Helens really gonna run a new wide open offense? And can the locals dominate the new Coapa League? Will you watch the Jamboree on CCTV at seven o'clock p.m. on Saturday, and again at seven o'clock p.m. on Sunday, for the answers to these questions. The long hot days of summer are still with us, but so is the start of the fall political campaign. CCTV and the Columbia Technology Center will host a live debate between candidates Jackie Taylor, a Democrat, and Sam Patrick, Republican, for the State House of Representatives, September 17th at seven o'clock at the Columbia Center Auditorium. You're all inv invited to join us in the audience to ask questions of the candidates and call in telephone number and email address will be announced later. Well, and CCTV will also host a debate for the candidates for county commissioner from our studio October 7th at 7 p.m. Questions for the candidates may be called in to the show at 397-5886 or emailed to CCTV at CCTV at columbia-center.org anytime. With me is Gary White. Is He is the coordinator of the Faith in Action program at Columbia Community Health. Welcome, Gary, to St. Helens and Columbia County. It's Thank nice you, to have you here. Thank you, Debbie. It's good to be here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the program that is set forth for Columbia County, and then we're going to ask you a little bit about your background. Sure. The Faith in Action program is actually modeled after a um, national model and what it is fundamentally is we try to go into communities and recruit congregational volunteers and we train them in how to give pastoral and practical to support to people who are in need. 
And what kind of needs are, do most of these people have that you're helping, volunteering? In Columbia County, we're focusing in on people who have disabilities. And by a disability, I mean someone that perhaps has autism or cerebral palsy or some kind of perhaps age-related disease such as Alzheimer's. Okay. And um, do you provide training for the people that you're trying to recruit? Um, is there a cost for them to sign up? Um, how does that pro part of the program work? Well, we, yeah, it's a good question. We, we do provide str rather structured training for all of our volunteers. The volunteers will go through about a four-hour general orientation training, and then after that, they'll also go through about a two-hour pastoral care training and really learn what the nuances of pastoral care are. We <coughs> envision this as being a, a program which supports a congregation's ministry. And part of that support is that we ask for the volunteers to pay $10 to help us cover the cost of training. Mm -hmm. And most, vo most volunteers' costs are covered by the congregation itself. So that way the congregation is supporting the team members in their ministry. Now what happens if you don't really belong to a particular church because of maybe your job doesn't allow you to go to church at the time that church is set for or whatever, but you'd really like to be involved in this program. Is, is that okay to come to you and say, hey, you know, I don't really go to a special church, but I really want to be involved in, and can you get me into the training? Right. Well, one of the beauties of this program is that we recognize that we're all spiritual beings and we're connected through that, regardless of whether we're part of a faith community or not. And so if you're not part of a faith community, please give us a call because we... Right now we have more requests for respite care than we have volunteers, and we need uh, volunteers desperately, mm -hmm. actually. And give us a call and we can hook you up and we can get you involved quickly. Michael. Now, when you do the respite care, you're basically, if, my, if I understand the program, you're going into the home, you're relieving possibly the, the present caregiver, for example, a, a parent most right. of the time so that they can possibly go to a doctor's appointment, uh, maybe just go for a nice walk, right. uh, go to the grocery store, something like that. Is, is that the way I understand the program to work? Right, exactly. Uh, the kinds of things that our volunteers do is they can give some limited transportation, some light housekeeping, uh, go in and listen to someone tell their story, or just if a mother, for example, is taking care of an autistic child and requires 24-hour care, a, and a volunteer can go into that home and let that mother get out, for example, two hours on a Saturday morning. And that's a very holy gift that can be given mm -hmm. to that mother. And just let her get away and, and be part of another world. So the, you're not limited, uh, or the, the time frame in which you volunteer for to replace somebody or let them get out of the house for a little while is, is semi-structured in that maybe you might say, well, we like like it if you give maybe a minimum of two hours a week or something but basically um, the world is yours as far as how much time you'd like to spend as long as it works okay with the uh, caregivers uh, schedule is that how that works yeah. well the, the way the program is structured is that we actually use care teams which are a group of about okay. six to nine individuals and so this way not no one person is overworked and we know that in within any group experience some people are going to drop out and having six to nine mm -hmm. members, this permits for that to happen without any one person mm -hmm. being overworked. Um, and also the team members are there to support each other as they engage in this ministry. Uh, so it's, it's, it's quite exciting, but we, we ask the team members not to do any more than what they're comfortable with doing. Because okay. what that can becomes for us is a diagnostic tool that we know that we have put in this kind of intervention for, for these people. and now it can no longer support what needs to happen, so maybe some other kind of intervention needs to happen. So if you're volunteering then, um, do you do any form of analysis? Like if you're the volunteer, do, do they come back and report into you and say, well, these are the, the reactions I had with this individual, or is that even part of the program at all so that you can continue monitoring them through their disabilities and that sort of thing? Right. In fact, uh, each volunteer uh, fills out a form and every every month okay. describe the kinds of care that they've given and the amount of time that they've given with that care and also the care receiver fills out uh, a report and lets me know what kind of care and what kind of care that they're needing that they, that they can't okay. receive and so we keep close ties on what's happening with that. So, so their help also helps you to help give them help in other directions 
from the reports that the respite um, into, you know, volunteer brings to you. Exactly. It also helps us with long-term uh, vision. As we look into the community and see where the needs are, okay. we can begin to target those. Now, this program is not new to Columbia County, but it was placed on hold for a while. Is that the way I understand it? Right. In fact, respite care began in Columbia County back in 1994 with a, a grant from the Families Access to Respite program. Okay. And, but we were able to hire a part-time coordinator at that point. And then last year was the first year we were actually able to hire someone full-time. Uh, and last year we were able to give over 2,000 hours of respite service to people in Columbia County. Now that sounds like a lot of hours, but we know that we have about 2,000 families in Columbia County that are living with some kind of disability. Mm -hmm. So that works out to about one hour per family per year. Which really isn't very much time when you think about it's it. It's not very much about. time. Well, now let's get down to some personal questions. Where are you from? And let's, let's hear about your background. Well, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. And I, I've been told repeatedly that I don't really have a southern accent. <laughs> I was uh, one of those that asked that question. <laughs> but it, it leaks through occasionally. Um, and I come also from having run a program for the past three years, a Faith in Action program in Nashville. Um, in that program, we had over 300 active volunteers and coming from about 37 different congregations, and they spanned the entire theological spectrum. Mm -hmm. So we had very conservative and very liberal congregations involved. It was a very exciting program. Well, the cupboards are still bare at the Columbia County Food Banks, and there's still a lot of people out there that really don't know where their next meal is coming from. So please, if you can make a donation of food, we'd appreciate it if you would do that. Now, the St. Helens JCs have organized a food drive to help meet this emergency, and they'll be going door to door on Sunday, September 13th, from 1 to 5 p.m. If you're not home or you want to help out sooner, you can leave the food at the JC Hall at 215 North 6th Street. Or, if you're not going to be home, leave the food on your porch, and they'll be happy to pick that up. And thanks, folks, because this is really an emergency. And now here's what's featured at the Columbia Theater. And for information regarding the showtimes, give them a call at 397-9791. Now we take our weekly visit to the good folks at the Columbia Humane Society. Now if you've been thinking about getting a new dog or cat, don't buy one. We suggest that you adopt one. And here's Pet of the Week. We're back on the Humane Society side and this little snuggler, his name is Henry. And Henry is eight weeks old. Henry is a Dalmatian lab. Border Collie, Aussie, Aussie Shepherd. <laughs> That's quite a list. Poor guy. Four combos there, huh? And you can see the Dalmatian spot. Oh, yeah. He has a brother named Martin. They were born with uh, just about no tail. That's just the way they came. They were docked. They're little, loving, sweet hearts. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. just real sweethearts. They are available for adoption from Columbia Humane Society for. Get Come here, there. Awesome. Let's get that face. For seventy-five dollars, and that includes their littering and all their shots, which they already have some of their shots. So we get some more. And this would be probably a mid-size dog, maybe lab size at the biggest. That the biggest in his bloodline. When I was back there, th both of the pups were very quiet while the rest of them were barking. Mm -hmm. So they seem so to have a good, good disposition. I'm kind of shy. Oh, yeah. Come on. Put your little face on. Come on, let's see that face. It's so cute. Darn dogs. And there will be a. <laughs> <laughs> We just start to say there will be a... <laughs> yeah, you, we will need a, a home visit on these little guys, and you need a fenced-in yard. That is the Humane Society's requirements for a dog. Like I said, they are $75, and this one here is 
Henry even has a brother, Martin. And Martin looks an awful lot like Henry, except has a um, more of a tail. More of a tail. Right. Maybe the coloring, the spots might be a little right. bit different. When I was back there, yeah. it was hard to tell the difference this between the two of them. This one is fuzzy. Henry's fuzzy, and Martin is a little just long-haired and smoother looking. And he still has he has the same kind of ears and that oh, sort of thing. Everything, the faces and everything. In fact, you have to really look for the difference. They're almost yes. And the number to call for the Humane Society is 397-4353. Okay, this is Toby. Toby's a male. He's not neutered. He's two or three years old and he's a chow mix. He's house broke. He's great walking on a leash. He has a wonderful personality. He gets along with just about anything. He's not aggressive. Doesn't seem to be aggressive towards other dogs or cats. Yeah, what number does do they call to adopt him? Um, 397 3935. And how much will it cost for him? $55. They'll get 30 back once they get him fixed. How old did you say he is, Carol? Two to three years old. He's an owner surrender. <laughs> He's got real pretty coloring, doesn't he? The uh -huh. black and the brown together. He won't get any bigger than he is. He'll stay small like this. Oh, that's good. He was born June 1st. He's already been neutered. He's been loop tested. And he's negative. He's had his first shot. He has a, a roommate that's the same color, only shorter hair. He was a stray that came into us. And he's $45. He looks nice and soft and clean. He and he's a really nice kitty. He has never been sick. Nice mm. fluffy tail there. And how much will it cost to? $45. CCTV's Bruce Crawford with the Employment Department is on vacation this week. Tune in for Bruce again next week. Well, here's a look at some of the outbound traffic as this holiday weekend kicks into high gear. Now, the weather's going to be great, but expect crowded highways and even more crowded campgrounds and recreational facilities. This holiday has been the most deadly in Oregon highways for the past three years, so please don't drink and drive and be a little bit more patient with the crowds. But most of all, just have a great time. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Columbia County News, and we want to thank you very much for watching. I'm Debbie Corsilia, inviting you back next week for more news from around the county.